Let's try that again. Israel police crack down on legal reform protests. The rally in Tel Aviv came as lawmakers in Jerusalem passed in preliminary reading a bill limiting the chances of prime minister being impeached. Israel police on horses used stun grenades during a demonstration as Israeli Prime Minister Benjamin Netanyahu's nationalist coalition government presses on with its contentious judicial overhaul in Tel Aviv, Israel, March 1st. Israel police clashed Wednesday with protesters rallying against the government's judicial reform program, which critics say threatens democracy as lawmakers held a preliminary vote on the last controversial bill. And this is Malaysia now. Demonstrators in Tel Aviv blocked some streets and police employed stun grenades, water cannons, and uh, officers on horseback in a rare use of force in the coastal city of uh, AFP, journalists said. Some 39 people were arrested for allegedly rioting and not obeying instructions by police officials, police said in a statement. Eleven wounded protesters arrived at Tel Aviv's Ichilov Hospital, a spokesman for the facility told AFP. I'm here for democracy, for human rights, for justice, demonstrator Johan Kanal, 39, told AFP in Tel Aviv. Another protester, 51-year-old lawyer, Donna Niren, said, We're blocking all the intersections. We're stopping the entire traffic in the entire country and hope that the current government will understand that we're dead serious and that we'll do everything in our power to change the current path that they're taking. Prime Minister Benjamin Netanyahu hit back in a televised statement, the right to demonstrate is not the right to block the country, he said, accusing demonstrators of crossing a red line. A sovereign country cannot tolerate anarchy, added Netanyahu, who returned to power late last year at the head of a coalition with uh, ultra-Orthodox Jewish and extreme right allies. The premier earlier stressed his support for the police who are acting against lawbreakers who are disrupting Israeli citizens' daily lives. The rally in Tel Aviv came as lawmakers in Jerusalem passed in preliminary reading a bill limiting the chances of Prime Minister being impeached. Opponents say the measures aimed at protecting Netanyahu who is on trial for corruption um, and charges he denies. These are charges he denies. MPs voted 62 to 20 in favor of the legislation, which proposes a three-quarter parliamentary majority uh, to impeach a premier due to physical or mental, mental incapacity. Following the initial vote, the bill will pass to a parliamentary committee to consider whether it be scrapped or returned to the chamber to continue the legislative process. The broader judicial reform announced in January includes measures that critics argue are intended to hand politicians more power at the expense of the judiciary. Netanyahu and his justice minister, Yav Lavin, argue the change is necessary to reset the balance between elected officials and the Supreme Court, which they view as politicized. Lawmakers also passed in preliminary reading a bill to impose the death penalty on terrorists with 55 MPs in favor and nine against. Extreme right politicians have repeatedly attempted to pass such legislation in the 120 seat chamber but have failed to garner enough support. Israel abolished the use of capital punishment for murder in civil courts in 1954, though it can still in theory be applied for war crimes against humanity, genocide, treason, and crimes against the Jewish people. And from Press TV, Israel police fire stun grenades, tear gas as anti-regime protests rage on. Israel police have used tear gas, water cannons, and stun grenades to disperse protesters against highly contested plans by Prime Minister Benjamin Netanyahu's far-right cabinet to reform the occupying regime's judiciary. The violence broke out after hundreds of demonstrators blocked roads and charged or chanted anti-Netanyahu slogans and central Tel Aviv and other places across the occupied territories as part of a disruption day protests on Wednesday. Police on horseback tried to stop demonstrators breaching barricades in Tel Aviv, 
with footage showing the regime's forces dragging protesters off the road as demonstrators called out shame and we're the majority and we're out on the streets. Israeli media said the police for the first time since protests began some two months ago deployed tear gas, stun grenades, and water cannons to disperse demonstrators, adding that at least 11 people sustained injuries and altercations with police and 39 others were arrested in the mass rallies. In one video widely shared, an Israeli cop was seen to kneel on the neck of a protester to subdue him while several others held him down. The screen captured from a video shows an Israeli cop kneeling on the neck of that protester. And following the police dispersing uh, protesters in Tel Aviv, the Israeli regime, uh, their opposition leader, Yair Lapid, informed the press that he had left the Knesset in order to join the protest with Netanyahu accusing him of sowing anarchy. Protests have taken place across the occupied territory since Netanyahu's controversial move to reform the judiciary. Opponents argue that the legal changes threaten the independence of judges and weaken oversight of the ruling cabinet and parliament. They say the plan will undermine the rights of minorities and open the door to more corruption. Opponents also say the judicial overhaul is meant to help Netanyahu avoid the repercussions of his ongoing corruption case, including bribery, fraud, and breach of trust. Netanyahu, however, has called the protesters anarchists, claiming that they cannot come to terms with last November's elections, which helped him stage a comeback as prime minister. The embattled premier also alleges that the reforms are required to curtail the jurisdiction of the sitting judges, whom he accuses of having too much power. And from protomalo.com, this is... Israeli police crackdown clash with anti-Netanyahu protests. Weeks of anti-government protests in Israel turned violent on Wednesday for the first time as police fired stun grenades and a water cannon at a demonstrator or at demonstrators who blocked the Tel Aviv highway. The crackdown came shortly after Israel's hardline national security minister urged a tough response to what he said were anarchists. The violence came as thousands across the country launched a national disruption day against the government's plan to overhaul Israel's judicial system. Prime Minister Benjamin Netanyahu's allies say the program's meant to reduce the influence of unelected judges, but critics, including influential business leaders and former military figures, say Netanyahu's pushing the country toward authoritarian rule and has a clear conflict of interest in targeting judges as he stands trial on corruption charges. Since Netanyahu's government took office two months ago, tens of thousands of people have taken to the streets to protest the charges or the changes, which they say endanger Israel's fragile system of checks and balances. Wednesday, however, marked the first time police use force against the crowds. The government is barreling ahead with the legal changes, and a parliamentary committee is moving forward on a bill that will weaken the Supreme Court. And I guess when they say, you know, it marked the first time police use force against the crowds, they they don't mean. Um, non-Palestinians and and Palestine driven um, disruptions or protests I'm sure those have uh, forces have been used in those the government's barreling ahead with the legal changes in parliamentary committees moving forward on a bill that would weaken that Supreme Court the crisis has sent shockwaves through Israel and presented Netanyahu with a serious challenge a wave of Israeli Palestinian violence in the occupied West Bank has compounded his troubles. The rival sides are digging in, deepening one of Israeli's worst domestic crisis, crises. Netanyahu and his government, made up of ultranationalists, have branded the protesters anarchists while stopping short of condemning a West Bank settler mob that torched a Palestinian town earlier this week. The legal overhaul has sparked an unprecedented uproar with weeks of mass protests, criticism from legal experts, and rare demonstrations by army reservists who pledged to disobey orders under what they say will be a dictatorship after the overhaul passes. Business leaders, the country's booming tech sector, and leading economists have warned of economic turmoil under the judicial changes. Israel's international allies have expressed concern. In the first scenes of unrest since the protests began two months ago, police arrived on horseback in the center of the seaside metropolis of Tel Aviv, hurled stun grenades, and used a water cannon against thousands of protesters who chanted democracy and police state. A video put, uh, posted on social media showed a police officer pinning down a protester with his knee on the man's neck and another showed a man 
who reportedly had his ear ripped off by a stun grenade. Facing the police, protesters also chanted, Where were you? A reference to the absence of security forces during the settler attack on the Palestinian town of Hawara, which took hours to quell and which the military said it was not prepared for. Police said protesters threw rocks and water bottles at the officers. Police said they arrested 39 protesters in Tel Aviv for disturbing the peace, while 11 people were hospitalized with various injuries, including to Tel Aviv Sarowski Medical Center. Earlier Wednesday, protesters blocked Tel Aviv's main freeway and the, the highway connecting the city to Jerusalem, halting rush hour traffic for about an hour. At busy train stations in Tel Aviv, protesters prevented trains from departing by blocking their doors. National Security Administrator Itamar ben Giver, an ultranationalist accused of politicizing the police, has vowed to take a tough line. He called on police to prevent the road blockages, labeling the demonstrators anarchists. Netanyahu said Ben Giver had his full support, will not tolerate violence against police blocking roads and blatant breaches of the country's law. The right to protest is not the right to anarchy, he said. Netanyahu also blamed opposition leader Yair Lapid for fomenting anarchy. Lapid called on police to show restraint and said Netanyahu's government had lost control. The protesters are our patriots, Lapid tweeted. They are fighting for the values of freedom, justice, and democracy. The role of the police is to allow them to express their opinions and fight for the country they love. Thousands of protesters came out in locations across the country waving Israeli flags. Parents marched with their children. Tech workers walked out of work to demonstrate, and doctors and scrubs protested outside hospitals. The main rallies were expected later Wednesday outside the Knesset or Parliament and near Netanyahu's official residence in Jerusalem. Every person here is trying to keep Israel the democracy, and if the current government will get its way, then we're afraid we, no, we, will, or we will no longer be a democracy or a free country, said Ariana Shapira, a protester in Tel Aviv. As a woman, as a mother, I'm very scared for my family and my friends. Justice Minister Yarov Levine, the overhaul's main architect, said Tuesday that the coalition aims to ram through some of the judicial overhaul bills into law in the coming month before the parliament goes on recess for the Passover holiday on April 2nd. The Knesset also is set to cast a preliminary vote Wednesday on a separate proposal to protect Netanyahu from being removed from his post, being removed from his post, a move that comes following calls to the country's attorney general to declare him unfit for office. Netanyahu has been the center of years-long po uh, political crisis in Israel with former allies turning on him and refusing to sit him in government because of his corruption charges. The, uh, that political turmoil with five elections in four years culminated in Netanyahu returning to power late last year with ultranationalist and ultra-Orthodox parties as partners in the current far-right government. Wielding immense political power, those allies secured top portfolios in Netanyahu's government, among them Ben Giver, who before entering politics was arrested dozens of times and was convicted of incitement to violence and support for a terror group. Finance Minister Betzala Smotrich, a firebrand West Bank settler leader who has been given authority over parts of the territory, and they promised to take a tough stance against Palestinians, which has ratcheted up tension in recent weeks. Smotrich publicly called for a harsh response to the killing of two Israelis in the West Bank by a Palestinian gunman saying Israel should go crazy shortly before Sunday's mob violence. While he later urged restraint, he also said Wednesday that Hawara, Hawara, the Palestinian town that was attacked, should be erased. In addition, the protests, Netanyahu's government, Israel's most right-wing ever, is beginning to show early cracks just two months into its tenure. The government says the legal changes are meant to correct an imbalance that's given the courts too much power, and allowed them to meddle in the legislative process. They say the overhaul will streamline governance and say elections last year, which returned Netanyahu to power with a slim majority in parliament, gave them a mandate to make the changes. Critics say the overhaul will upend Israel's system of checks and balances, granting the prime minister and the government unrestrained power and push the country toward authoritarianism. From Middle East Eye, Israel police assault protesters during anti-government marches. Demonstrators launched National Day of Disruption as government presses on with controversial judicial overhaul. Israel police violently dispersed protesters on Wednesday 
and thousands marched in different cities to protest against the controversial government plan to overhaul the judicial system amid growing political turmoil. At least 11 people were wounded from bruises, cuts, and burns. According to a Tel Aviv hospital, another 28 were arrested. Protesters declared Wednesday a national day of disruption, blocking vital roads and burning tires on highways. Marches were set to culminate in a large demonstration in Tel Aviv in front of the residence of the Prime Minister Benjamin Netanyahu. Police have used stun grenades, water cannons, mounted officers to disperse demonstrators. These are fateful days for the country. That's why we're here, Omer Shemer, a protester told Middle East Eye from the site of the demonstration in Tel Aviv. The reaction of the police today is related to the instructions of Ben Giver. We are shooting. We are shouting. Where were you in Hawara? Because they did a pogrom there, and there are zero arrestees, Shemer said. As protesters sought to block major trans transport intersections around Israel, the government instructed police officers to show tolerance. Far-right National Security Minister Itamar ben Giver branded the protesters anarchists and told police to break up the gatherings. We'll not allow a civil uprising and anarchists to block major roads, ben Giver said. Israel's in the midst of a political crisis that's pitted Netanyahu's far-right government against the country's civil society, academic and business elite and former government ministers and military figures. Crowds are protesting against a government that would give Parliament the power to override the Supreme Court through a simple majority vote and de facto control over court nominees. It would also limit the court's ability to bar legislation that infringes human and civil rights. Israel has no constitution, and there is little separation between the executive and legislative, legislative branches as governments nearly always hold the majority in the parliament, the Knesset. This has historically meant the Supreme Court is the most effective check on government power. Observers said the use of violent dispersal methods by the police against secular Jewish Israeli protesters is almost unheard of. I think it's unremarkable or I think it's remarkable to see demonstrators bold actions today in blocking vital roads and public facilities and in return the police violence. This suggests more violence will likely follow in the future. And this may lead to the fall of the government, Haifa based analysis, Amir Mahul told M E E. Yeah, you see, but there's that saying, you know, they came for the so and so, they came for the so and so, right? So th the idea that they never used the quote unquote uh the police against secular Jewish Israeli protest that doesn't matter because they always use the police against Palestinians. So people are desensitized to see the IDF, the ZOF, the IOF, to see them doing this uh, is not really outstanding because it, it's been allowed to be done on Palestinians constantly. So we can, we can term them um, anarchists as opposed to terrorists, but just from a, from a, a critical analytical perspective, there is no difference. And these are demands from within the ruling Likud party. This is back to Middle East Eye, including from MP David Baton, which called for serious dialogue with the opposition. There are widening cracks within the governing coalition, which were reflected in reactions to the Huara rampage, the Israeli PA Akaba meeting, and the police's resentment towards Ben Giver, he said. Yonatan Tuval, an analyst at the Israel Institution for Regional Foreign Policies, MITFIM, told MEE that protests stand a chance at preventing and perhaps at the very least slowing down the legislative agenda of the government. A recent poll by the Israeli Democracy Institute found that 66% of Israelis believe the Supreme Court should not have its power curtailed. Speaking from the demonstration in Tel Aviv, Tuval said he was uncertain impact or what impact the protests can have, but that mass protests were the only choice left. The only chance for the government's agenda to fail is if there is mass popular opposition and mass protests across the country. Internationally, at least, Tuval believes the ongoing protests are making it very difficult for Netanyahu to portray himself as a stable and solid leader. Speaking at the same rally earlier in the day, Yuval 
Diskin, the former head of the country's intelligence service, Shin Bet, warned about the growing polarization in Israel and the threat from the settlers. I wish to send condolences to the families of those killed in the Huwara terrorist attack, and I believe that Shin Bet will get the terrorists. My heart also goes out to the people of Huwara who were going through difficult times caused by <coughs> Jewish rioters, said Diskin. These rioters and their rabbis are a threat to our security. We're in the midst of a difficult wave of terror, but do not fear because the criminally accused has given our security to the TikTok minister, Diskin added. The weekend's rampage by settlers had been described as unprecedented in its nature, or has been described as unprecedented in its nature. At least one Palestinian was killed and nearly 400 were wounded in the attacks on Huwara and other West Bank towns and villages, Palestinian health officials said. Well, we could say it's unprecedented, right, that these, these this rampage or these rampages, but, I mean, I don't know. I don't, I'm not exactly sure that that's the case. I mean, if they have on, um, um, if they have on uniforms, it's okay. And then also, I mean, when you think of like the, maybe the Ibrahimi Mosque situation, or even what happens in Al Aqsa from time to time, you know. And the protests were largely boycotted by Palestinian citizens of Israel who believe they're excluded from the anti-government protest movement, according to Rami Yunus, an independent Palestinian journalist and former TV host on Israel's public broadcasting corporation. Only now the protesters are finally starting to link the programs in Hawara by settlers and what the police and government's doing here in Israel, Yunus told MEE from Haifa. It's very hard for Palestinians to join the protests that wish to preserve the judicial status quo, which has been deepening the oppression of Palestinian citizens of Israel and deepening the apartheid in West Bank, he added. When a Palestinian friend of Yunus was invited to speak at an gov- anti-government protest almost two weeks ago, She was the only speaker who asked to send over her speech in advance so that the Israeli organizers organizers can go over it, he said. And what do you know? They don't like the fact she had direct messages against the occupation and that you can't fight for a democracy that's occupying another people. She was banned from the demonstration. As protesters grow, an Israeli parliament committee approved restrictions on the Supreme Court's power to override laws a significant part of the government's plan to overhaul the judiciary. The decision by the the Knesset's Constitution Law and Justice Committee gives Supreme Court judges the ability to overturn unconstitutional laws with 12 out of 15 votes in favor. Currently, the Supreme Court can disqualify government legislation if it contradicts Israel's 13 basic laws, particularly the Human Dignity and Liberty Basic Law. Israel's basic laws are intended to be part of a future constitution. And that's another part of it. How can a country not even have a constitution? The committee also approved an override clause which will allow parliament members to reenact a law disqualified by the Supreme Court with a simple majority of 61 MPs out of 120, essentially stripping the court of its ability to revoke unconstitutional laws. Netanyahu and his allies say the judicial reforms are necessary to correct the power imbalance between elected representatives and the nation's top courts, but the plans have drawn a fierce opposition from groups including lawyers and raised concerns among business leaders, widening already deep political divisions in Israel's society. And from the Jerusalem Post, Israel police chief says force will be used if officers are attacked. This is actually from beforehand. Let's just see what their um, approach was to the to the uh, protest. Israel Police Commissioner Kobe Shabtai led a situational assessment with senior po- police officials on Wednesday evening amid escalating anti-government protests across Israel. Israel police sees the right to protest as a cornerstone of democratic state but will not allow public disorder nor will we allow any damage to be done to state symbols and property, Shabtai said following the assessment. Shabtai called on protesters to refrain from using provocation and violence against police officers and reaffirmed that police will only use force in response to violence against police or if dangerous posed to Israeli citizens. And from imemc.org, Israeli soldiers kill a Palestinian, injure two, abducted six in Jericho. 
Dozens of Israeli soldiers invaded Wednesday the Aqaba Yaber refugee camp in Ariha, Jericho, in the northeastern West Bank. Exchanged fire with Palestinian fighters in a surrounded home, killed one, and abducted at least six Palestinians. The soldiers initially took the Palestinian who was seriously injured to an Israeli hospital and later informed the Palestinian General Authority for Civil Affairs that the young man Mahmoud Jamal Hassan Hamdan, 22, has succumbed to his wounds. The Israeli army said it invaded the refugee camp to abduct Palestinians who are believed to be behind the Monday shooting attack that led to the death of Alan Ganellis and added that one of them sustained, sustained serious wounds while trying to retreat from the area. Media sources said the soldiers surrounded the home of Mar Shalun, where Palestinian fighters were hiding, and exchanged fire with them before firing a rocket at it. I think it's very significant that this is like a regular practice to shoot a rocket at a building so that the building collapses and kills the people inside of it. This has to be a violation of, of, of some type of uh, humane law, some law relating to humane treatment. The army claimed the abducted Palestinians exchanged fire with the soldiers before they were taken prisoners and their weapons confiscated. Palestinian medics tried to reach the seriously wounded man to provide essential aid, but the soldiers blocked them before taking him away. The army initiated the attack by deploying undercover soldiers who surrounded and isolated the home before many army vehicles invaded the refugee camp. The soldiers also opened fire at a Palestinian car, shattering its windows before confiscating it, in addition to shooting a young man with a rubber-coated steel bullet to the head during ensuing protests. It's worth mentioning that Jericho Ariha remained under strict siege for the third day while the army installed more roadblocks and placed sand hills on several streets. Earlier on Monday, two Israeli colonizers were killed in a shooting in Huara near Nablus. On Sunday, a Palestinian civilian was killed by Israeli soldiers while in his home at Zatara village. Sameh Akhtash, who was murdered by Israeli forces Sunday, was in Turkey two weeks before volunteering with the rescue team to save lives after the earthquake. On February 23, 2023, Israeli soldiers killed Mohammed Nabil Fauzi Abu Sabah, 29 in Jenin, in the Northern West Bank. And the day before Mohammed's death, Israeli soldiers killed 11 Palestinians, injured more than 102 sick seriously, and caused more than 250 Palestinians to suffer the effects of tear gas inhalation and other minor wounds. One Palestinian dead several arrested in Israeli Jericho raid. The Israeli forces' detention of Palestinian in Ariha comes amidst efforts to pass a new law to allow the execution of Palestinians. Israeli forces raided the Aqaba Yaber refugee camp in Ariha in the occupied West Bank on Wednesday, 1 March, the International Middle East Media Center reported. Israeli soldiers surrounded and besieged a home before firing their weapons, wounding three and killing one of the occupants while arresting five more. The Israeli army claimed it besieged and then invaded the refugee camp to search for Palestinians involved in the killing of an Israeli driver in a shooting attack two days prior on 27 February. The Palestinian Prisoner Society said the detained Palestinians are all former political prisoners, including Abdul Nasser M Musa Shalun, Mar Shalun, Amr Shalun, Mohammed Shalun, and his son Saleh, as well as Mahmoud Jamal Hassan Hamdan who was critically injured and later died of his wounds. During the raid, Israeli forces sealed off the camp and prevented ambulances and journalists from entering it while using a man and his child as human shields, Wafa News Agency reported. The director of the ambulance served in Jericho told Al Jazeera that Israeli forces, or service in Jericho told Al Jazeera that Israeli forces prevented his staff from treating the injured during the military operation. Again, the director of the ambulance service in Jericho told Al Jazeera that Israeli forces prevented his staff from treating the injured during the military operation. operation. The Wednesday raid in Jericho coincided with efforts in Israel to pass legislation allowing for the execution of Palestinian detainees for alleged terror offenses. National Security Minister Itamar Ben-Giver campaigned on a promise to 
instate the death penalty and repeatedly threatened to send Palestinians to the electric chair, Wafa reported. Meanwhile, on 24 February, UN experts expressed grave concern about efforts to reinstate the death penalty for persons defined as terrorists. The reinstatement of the death penalty is a deeply retrogressive step, more so when, on the face of it, the punishment will apply against minorities living within the state or those who live under the 55-year military occupation and rule, the experts said. Israel Army raids Akbar Jabber refugee camp in Jericho, three injured, one critical. A large Israeli armed force today raided Akba Jabba ref- refugee camp in the West Bank of Jericho, Ariha, and surrounded a building it claims activists responsible for an attack outside Ariha were in the building. As reports said, three were injured by the army gunfire, one of them critically. Medics said a young man was shot by live ammunition in the abdomen and was critically wounded. Medics tried to resuscitate him and provide him with treatment, but the Israeli occupation soldiers arrested him, said the medics. The Israeli occupation forces also arrested a number of people in the besieged building as they sealed off the camp and prevented ambulances and journalists from entering it, uh, while also using a man and his child as a human shield. The Palestinian prisoners' society said the army detained six people during its assault on Akbar Yabra refugee camp, including four siblings from the Shloon family, ranging in age between 55 and 39 years of age, the 24-year-old son, of one of the brothers, all former prisoners, and a wounded person identified as Mahmoud Jamal Hamdan. Israeli forces continue to besiege Jericho for a third consecutive day this yesterday. Israeli forces continue to besiege the occupied West Bank city of Jericho on Wednesday for the third consecutive day, the official news agency Wafa reported. Official Palestinian sources said that Israeli forces continue to erect checkpoints and barricades at all the main and secondary entrances leading to the city, preventing people from leaving and entering. Photos and video footage on social platforms, social media platforms, show Palestinians waiting in long queues at the checkpoints on the outskirts of the city. The movement restrictions in places or in place have resulted in blocking the access of Palestinians seeking to travel to Jordan, to the Al Karama border crossing the only land crossing for Palestinians between the occupied West Bank and Jordan. The besiege has been in place since a Palestinian gunman killed an Israeli-American settler who has served in the Israeli army for several years in a drive-by shooting at an illegal Jewish settlement near Areha. The drive-by shooting came after Sunday's settler violence in the town of Huwera, south of Nablus. And from IMEMC.org, Army abducts two Palestinians in Areha. On Tuesday evening, Israeli soldiers abducted two Palestinians in a village north of Ariha in the northern eastern part of occupied West Bank. The Palestinian pris- Prisoners Society said the soldiers invaded Mara Ghazal village before stopping and searching several cars. They added that the soldiers forced the two young men out of their car and abducted them before moving them to an unknown destination. On Monday night, the army tightened the siege on Ariha and installed sand hills on streets leading to Palf- Palm Farms north of Ariha and south of the Abad Yabar refugee camp. Furthermore, the soldiers invaded Izbet Shufa village south of the northwest or the northern west bank city of Tulkarim before storming and ransacking man homes while interrogating several Palestinians and inspecting their ID cards. The soldiers also hurled concussion grenades and fired several homes at several uh, what well, fired at several homes in the village. Okay, and remember that your engagement through a like, a share, and or subscribe will propel us at warp speed towards the continuation of our mission to truthfully go where no news will have been going before. (laughs) 